Hi everyone, this video is on data privacy. I will introduce a data privacy reference framework and talk about various concepts in detail. So let's get started. First, let's start with discussing why is data privacy needed. Data privacy in recent few years has been mainstreamed, the trigger point being regulations. Yes, mostly it's the regulations that mandate organizations to have a robust data privacy ecosystem. Few famous regulations like General Data Protection Regulation, also known as GDPR in European Union, California Consumer Privacy Act, also known as CCPA in California, e-privacy in the UK, and Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA, which is a healthcare specific regulation in the US. Of course, needless to say, these regulations are there to protect rights of individuals, also known as data subjects in this context. So far we discussed why. Now let's discuss how. The regulations that we talked about earlier in turn help formulate or shape an organization's data policy or data governance policy. I have covered building blocks of data governance in a separate video already. Do check it out. So in a nutshell, this data policy with respect to data privacy mostly covers the rules that govern data privacy in an organization and also standards that should be followed in all phases of privacy data lifecycle. We've discussed why and how. Now let's focus on where should data privacy be implemented. Data privacy should be implemented in all higher level phases of data lifecycle, namely at data capture, during data storage, and during data usage. At data capture, there are two concepts widely used. One, data minimization. Here, the objective of an organization should be to capture from an individual only what's absolutely necessary. For example, if name, date of birth and social security number is must have an essential data to support the individual and tax details is good to have information, then it's not a wise idea to capture tax details. This is data minimization. Next concept during data capture phase, which could also span across other phases is consent management. This process basically captures an individual's willingness to receive communications from an organization. This willingness is called permissions and typically can be either to receive or not to receive communications, that is opt-in or opt-out. It also deals with mode by which the individual chooses to receive and not receive the communication. This could be various channels like email, SMS, WhatsApp, voice calls, etc. This part is called preferences. Most of the privacy regulations in countries where data privacy regulations are more active state that organization should build a process at data capture to let user decide how he or she should receive communications, if at all. And the permission captured for one mode should not be used across all modes of communication. For example, the individual can choose to receive marketing communication from a particular organization by SMS and WhatsApp only and not via phone call. This means that if an organization makes a phone call to market a product to a customer, the organization is actually violating the regulation. Please note that there should also be provision for individual to select consent across different products or area for an organization. For example, preferences for marketing communication can be different from account related communications where an individual can choose phone call as a preferred method. So how is this consent typically captured from an individual? It can be captured during sign up or onboarding into the organization. It can be captured by organizational representative via phone call or via email. And most interestingly, via browser cookies. I am sure if you have recently opened a website that mostly caters to users from Europe region, 
you must have come across a pop up asking to accept all cookies or accept essential cookies only and i am also sure very few of us would have gotten the opportunity to go through the privacy text where the organization sign posts different type of cookies they use like targeting cookies essential cookies etc you are seeing this in every website for users from europe because gdpr is mandatory in europe and the fines for non compliance are enormous now let's discuss privacy during data storage and data usage first concept here is one that has quite rapidly evolved in recent few years with multiple companies building products using emerging technologies to solve this which is data sensitivity data sensitivity is a process within an organization to find and classify sensitive information one term we keep hearing in this area is pii which stands for personally identifiable information as the name suggests it's basically data fields that can help identify an individual privacy law states that such information should be labeled and stored in a different way so typically there is a three part process to implement this first is to detect or discover for a large organization this can be quite an effort involving lots of people manually going in studying the metadata and finding if a particular data field or combination of data fields are pii to save this effort hence there are companies that are using natural language processing and machine learning techniques to discover pii data now once you have detected sensitive data fields next goal is to classify the fields based on organizational policies and standards this is where data stewardship plays a important role and finally this particular data once classified should be stored in a special way like in a confidential or secret bucket requiring elevated access there is a concept that can be used to store such data which is called data masking the last concept in the where section is data retention various data privacy regulations state that organizations should keep an individual's record only for a justifiable period or for business necessity time frame and then get rid of it there is no defined period as of now it can range from few weeks up to 10 years justification is very subjective organizations can say they need the record for audit purposes or for different regulations hence this is a very involving topic which is expected to gain momentum and become more firm in coming years so in terms of implementation this seems quite a simple process but on the ground it's actually quite complex identifying an individual record across multiple systems tagging it to a business process and assuring the record doesn't overlap with another business process can be quite a task especially when the organization's data lineage is still emerging and finally before i leave there are two absolutely essential and proactive concepts that cannot be missed on the subject of data privacy first one is privacy impact assessment or pia regulatory body recommends organizations to form committees to conduct periodic privacy impact assessment with an objective of detecting and managing privacy risks this is typically performed during change or can also be performed on existing setup before compliance is achieved second concept is privacy by design which calls out integration of privacy in the system's architecture or design itself during the approval of a design change or a new design it is recommended that privacy aspect is also considered as an item so that's all we have for today if you like the video and had a good learning experience then do check out our other videos do like and share also subscribe the channel for latest videos and trends in the world of architecture see you in the next video